All right, so this is a really interesting story that happened earlier this week. If you haven't heard about it, a 22 year old by the name of Austin Wallace posted a TikTok video. And in this video, he's super emotional, he's frustrated, he's crying. And it's because he just quit his $100,000 a year job to go and work for Logan Paul. The catch though, is that he doesn't know Logan Paul. So he sneaks in backstage, he actually gets to meet Logan, he tells him his story, and then it gets really, really awkward. Now, as somebody who's been 22 before, as somebody who's collaborated with one of Logan Paul's channels, and as somebody who's quit their job cold turkey with no backup plan, I feel like I have an interesting perspective that I wanna share in this video. And later, I'll even share with Austin, if he's watching this video, my YouTube channel's analytics to show you how much of a difference collaborating with Logan Paul made or didn't make for my channel. It's gonna be really, really interesting. So the video starts off with Austin sneaking up to him, telling him the story, and already it starts off on the wrong foot. No, I, no, I, I'm, I quit my job. No, wait, I'm, 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 I'm I, interested. It's a story. I'm interested. It's a story. I, I quit my job legit two days ago. I came up here, took a risk. I'm originally from Ohio. Did you originally, sneak up here? No, I didn't sneak in here. I, I didn't sneak. What do you mean sneak up? Like here? On, on stage? Or you just like? Yes, I did. You want? It's I one did. of the sneak, I the sneak I'm videos. Sorry, I, I just. Did you print the ticket and stuff? No, I just needed to talk to you. I'm really, I'm trying to talk, talk to your about? brother. I'm trying to talk about business, trying to talk about trying to get a job. All right, so that obviously didn't go so well. So first, let me teach you about sneak interviews. The first thing you wanna do is lead with the truth. Like I palmed it and I threw it off frame. So first, come up to Logan and say, hey Logan, I snuck into this event. I'm not supposed to be here, but I have a great idea on how to improve your life. Always lead with how you can improve their life, not with how they can improve yours, which is literally what he says. He says, hey, I need a job. <laughs> like imagine if someone came up to you and was like, hey stranger, smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. You probably wouldn't respond to that very well. So instead I would have said, hey Logan, I noticed that you're putting out only five videos a week when you could be doing seven. So I know how to increase your revenue without any extra work on your part, and I'll do all that for free. That creates some intrigue and you're reeling them in, right? Get out of here, Magic Harp. <laughs> Rather than starting with your own needs first. And if you don't know what interests him, you should be like, I got a BGS 10 Charizard for sale. I'm just kidding. It's only a PSA 10 Shadowless one, which is actually more rare. Just make them laugh. Start off positive. That is the priority when doing any interview, even if you're not sneaking up on someone, which generally you shouldn't be doing anyway. So then Logan asks, well, what are you good at? Let's take a look. What are you good at? I was having dances. I did like What's that. I did, I, I did that video, you know, like going oh, you, like that. Oh, you, oh, you, yeah, you know. Oh, so you really got what it takes. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Then why would I, I, I need a mentor. Job? Well, why would I do that? Imagine walking into an interview and they ask you, what are your skills? What are you good at? But worse than that, because he's like, well, I'm not even good at that. Now put yourself in your own shoes. If you were to walk up to you and ask yourself for a job, would you hire yourself if you had no skills? Now, to be fair to Austin, he's only 22 years old and he probably froze because he got really nervous because I guarantee you, if you're making $100,000 a year at 22, you're definitely good at something. Unless of course he exaggerated that part because it is hard to believe that you can make six figures at such a young age in Ohio where the median income is like $30,000 a year. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying if you're making that much money at such an early age, you're definitely good at something and you can bring someone up to $100,000 worth of value. Now from this point on though, the conversation sort of goes downhill because as soon as Austin realizes that it's not working and that Logan is not taking pity on him, he changes his strategy to try to flatter Logan. And here's what he says, it's really interesting. I bet I can't be a mentor right now, right? In my life, I up myself. I need a mentor, you know what I'm saying? Like I need a mentor. All right, I really like Logan for this one bit. Whether you like him or not, the few hours that I got to spend time with him earlier this year, I'm telling you, he is one of the most intelligent people that I've met, and he's hyper aware of everything he's doing. Obviously, he would not be where he is in life if he wasn't. I mean, yeah, he's definitely made some mistakes, but if you're 18 years old and you have world fame and a ton of money, you'd probably make some mistakes too, especially if the world was scrutinizing your every move under a microscope. But he is, without a doubt, one of the hardest working people in social media today, and he's extremely intentional. Just look at what he did with Floyd Mayweather. How does somebody with no boxing experience challenge one of the greatest, if not the greatest of all time, and make tens of millions of dollars despite losing the match? 
That is not an accident. Or the time that he bought all those Pokemon cards people criticized him for, where he auctioned them off and tripled his initial investment. None of that is unplanned. So the next part of this video gets even more interesting because Austin realizes this and he changes the strategy to objection. Like, of course, you need to know somebody to succeed, right? That's why I'm here. I want to connect because I want to succeed. And it gets really interesting. Any well, connections and you need people be no, you around you, right? No, I didn't have connections and people around. I have Jake. That's it. Do you have a brother? Do you have people? You, friends? I don't. I don't. Friends? You got, a, you got friends. You got a big I don't. Ghost. You don't have friends? I don't. I swear to God. I'm here by myself. I'm here by myself. Where are you from? I'm from Norwalk, well, Ohio. You're a good looking guy, bro. You have friends, bro. You're lying. You have friends. <laughs> go, go make content. Do stuff with your friends. I'm glad you quit your job. It takes to do that, bro. But like, now you got to act. I'm trying to make a step. I'm not, media. But I'm not the guy directly. You're, right? the, you're, def you're the guy. No, you're the no, guy. No. All right, so let me open up my analytics and hopefully prove to you once and for all that collaborating with someone like Logan Paul is not necessarily going to launch your YouTube career. Now, this is very relatable, I think, to everybody because we've all heard this saying, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. And in some cases, that is 100% true. The Las Vegas jobs market is the epitome of that saying, and that's really unfortunate because sometimes it doesn't matter what your resume looks like or what your qualifications are. It's all about who could put in that good word and give you that job, right? Well, let me share with you a story. <laughs> I've come so prepared, I love it. The day was Monday, January 4th. It was the day of my birthday, and Logan Paul and his team reached out to me to join them on their impulsive YouTube channel, which had like over 3 million subscribers at the time, it was a lot, and they wanted me to talk about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin because Bitcoin was taking off like a rocket. So I take a flight out on Wednesday. So we film the podcast, it goes live Thursday, January 7th, and at this point I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna be world famous. I'm gonna get over a million subscribers and I'm gonna make a ton of money and I can quit my job. And ironically, that's exactly what ended up happening. No, it didn't. <laughs> that would be awesome though. Here's what happened instead. All right, so if I go to my channel analytics and I show you the custom date range from January 7th, which is when the podcast went live, to the end of the month, January 31st, I had 794,000 returning viewers. Not bad. And that month, I also got 2.3 million unique viewers. Now, out of all of those people, I only got 118,000 new subscribers. Now, that sounds like a lot, but relatively speaking, as far as a YouTube success goes, that is not that many. Certainly not enough to quit your $100,000 a year job just yet. Now, you can do YouTube full time with less than 100K subs and make really good money, and some people do, but don't quit your job based on one big hit video or one collab. And this is because when you get a relatively big amount of subscribers like I did, chances are those people are not loyal to you. They are subscribing out of loyalty to the person they like to watch and they wanna support that creator. And so the next time you release your video, it could get very little views. And that's because your videos are probably very different than what they're used to watching. And that can signal to the algorithm, wait a minute, if Andre's subscribers aren't watching his videos, chances are the mainstream won't either, so we will not promote his videos. And in my case, I wasn't making Bitcoin and crypto videos before that podcast. Now, luckily, I had something like 1 million subscribers at the time of the podcast, so I had a little bit more balance, which meant if his subscribers that I got from the podcast didn't enjoy my non-crypto videos, those videos would still get views. And I could show you that right now. You could see that my non-crypto videos definitely get some views, not bad. But if I make a crypto video, it gets way more views. And that's because most of my recent subscribers came from the whole crypto boom and from that collab. So the trade-off is that if I wanna make more money, I should make more crypto videos, which I don't always wanna do because apparently I don't like money. No, it's because I want to be selfish with what I make. That is why sometimes I make videos about passive income and dividends and the stock market and real estate and Pokemon because that's what I enjoy. It's also why you should always want to grow organically by yourself over a long period of time so that you can make videos you love and the people that subscribe to you can enjoy watching you do the things that you love. That's why you don't want to rely on one viral video because chances are you're going to get stuck doing that one video over and over again. And if I had a choice, I would have loved to collab with Logan at a later stage of my career where crypto would have represented a smaller portion of my audience. But I always tell myself, Andre, social media people or influencers are beggars. 
They beg for attention. And this is true for all of us, whether it's Logan Paul, myself, or anyone else who does social media videos. We are all begging to be seen. We want that attention, and so do our videos. And beggars are never choosers. And that's why we can never choose how and when we become relevant. We just have to roll with the punches and move to LA, apparently, because <laughs> that's the next part. If you really are serious about it, bro, you should move to LA and just like you approached me, start making connections with every single person in LA. I'm serious, that's I will. it. I've always said this. If, you have, if you're charismatic and you can talk to someone, you can make it in LA. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's my advice. Okay, I will say that moving to LA means you'll make some really cool friends, you'll be more in the know and you'll collab more and make more videos and obviously all that helps. But if you're going to network, it's better to make videos for Facebook than it is for YouTube. Facebook has that social media network effect where really big creators can share each other's videos, they can leverage those relationships to really make people famous, to get a lot more views, and obviously make more money. But if you could be patient, YouTube is the better long-term play. Because when people come to Facebook, they're just bored and they wanna be entertained for the next five minutes because they're probably waiting at the DMV line. That's not always the case, but for the most part it is. On YouTube, people come here to watch you. They'll spend seven to 10 minutes with you on YouTube, whereas they'll spend something like 30 seconds on Facebook. YouTube is what builds brands, and that's just something to consider. The most important thing to remember is to not do what we did and quit your job without a game plan, especially if you're making a high six-figure income. The better way to do it is to continue working that job, saving your money, and making videos for social media alongside that job. It's gonna be painful, it's gonna be tough, it's gonna be like working two full-time jobs, but if you quit before getting any traction, you're gonna end up desperate, jobless, and looking like this. But at the end of the day, remember that it's not fair to give someone the burden of kickstarting your career. You can't approach someone you don't know and say, hi stranger, here's my life, go make something of it. It's not gonna be their responsibility to take you by the hand and help get you there. It works for some people, but that's like winning the lottery. For 99% of other people, you have to do that yourself. So I will say that if you're really young and you're still watching this video, maybe you're 22 and you wanna quit your job, just remember that even if you fail, you will have the rest of your life to figure it out. And your career will not define you. And the older you get, the more you'll realize that, but don't move to LA. Move somewhere with a lower cost of living, reduce your expenses, save more of your money, avoid those state income taxes if you can, move somewhere else, and just start your YouTube channel there. And don't make subscribers the benchmark of success. Make learning new skills be the benchmark for your improvement. And regardless of you succeeding or failing, you will walk away with a new set of skills, like learning how to pick a lock and rob in a bank, and there's your backup plan. This video was sponsored by Ocean's Eleven. No, this video is actually sponsored by yours truly. This is not something I ever promote, but I feel like it's somewhat relevant to this video. And if you're somebody who wants to grow on social media and YouTube specifically, you can go to zero to a million.com and it's a several hour long class that I've put together that will show you everything I know about growing on YouTube from zero to a million in just under two years. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes a Wednesday and Austin if you're watching this or anyone else that's facing a problem, trust me when I say that five years from now, you'll look back at this moment and you'll laugh because you realize it's just a small bump of the road. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.